What's up, Eco Nerdlings? In this podcast, we're going to be discussing things that you've probably heard a lot about, which are greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect. So let's get started. So the core case study in this unit is that studying a volcano to understand climate changes. So in 1991, a NASA scientist correctly predicted that the Philippines explosion would cool the average temperature of Earth by about half a degree Celsius over a 15 month period, and then it would return back to normal by 1995. So how does past climate and the greenhouse effect come into play? Well, over the past 900,000 years, the troposphere has experienced prolonged periods of global cooling and global warming. And for the past thousand years, temperatures have remained fairly stable, but have begun to rise during the last century. So looking at these graphs, we're going to examine the differences in temperature increase from 900,000 years ago to present. So this graph right here is basically a broad scale. So looking at 900,000 years ago, the average surface temperature was about 14 degrees Celsius. And we have highs and lows, so around 750,000 years ago was pretty low, uh, and the temperature was about 10 degrees Celsius. Moving up here, this is one of the hotter temperatures, so about, I'd say about 350,000. We have a high surface temperature of about 16 degrees Celsius. Same thing about 100,000 years ago. And then presently, we're starting to see a spike right here as well. So over the past 130 years, you can see there's quite a big increase in the temperature between about 1960 and 2000. So taking a closer look at this one, if you look about 10,000 years ago, this is when agriculture was first established and you see the temperature increasing right here as well. And then the temperature changed over the past thousand years. It remained pretty steady and then right here, probably in the 1960s, you start to see a spike again. So how do we know what temperatures were in the past? Well, scientists can analyze tiny air bubbles that are trapped in ice cores and learn about the past. So they can tell us what the composition of the troposphere was, what the temperature trends in those time periods were, and the different greenhouse gas concentrations as well. They can also tell us what the solar, snowfall, and forest fire activity was. So in 2005, an ice core showed that carbon dioxide levels in the troposphere are the highest that they've been in over 650,000 years. So there are three major factors that shape Earth's climate. Of course, we have the sun, and the sun is our source of all solar radiation. The greenhouse effect that warms the Earth's lower troposphere and the surface because of the presence of greenhouse gases. The ocean stores carbon dioxide and heat and it evaporates and receives water and it moves stored heat to other parts of the world. We also have natural cooling processes that occur through water vapor in the troposphere as heat rises. The major greenhouse gases in the lower atmosphere are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Make sure you know the major greenhouse gases. So these gases have always been present in Earth's troposphere in varying concentrations. And fluctuations in these gases plus changes in solar output are the major factors causing the changes in the tropospheric temperature over the past 400,000 years. So increases in average concentrations of three greenhouse gases in the troposphere between 1860 and 2004 are shown on the side right here. Most of them are due to fossil fuel burning, deforestation, and agriculture. So if you look at carbon dioxide right here, you see pretty much an exponential growth of increase in carbon dioxide output. As far as methane goes, you see pretty much an exponential growth, and then around 2000, you finally start to see a little bit of leveling off. Same thing for nitrous oxide, we have exponential growth, and then around 2000, we have a little bit of a leveling off. So climate change and anthropogenic activities, or human activities. So evidence that Earth's troposphere is warming is mostly because of human actions. In the 20th century, it's been the hottest century in the past thousand years. And since 1900, the Earth's average tropospheric temperature 
has risen at 0.6 degrees Celsius. Over the past 50 years, Arctic temperatures have risen almost twice as fast as those in the rest of the world. And we have glaciers and floating sea ice that are melting and shrinking at increasing rates. And this in turn is basically taking away habitats of some of the natural wildlife, including polar bears, which has been something you've probably seen on the news a lot lately. Warmer temperatures in Alaska, Russia, and the Arctic are melting permafrost, releasing carbon dioxide and methane into the troposphere. During the last century, the world's sea level rose by 10 to 20 centimeters, and that's mostly due to runoff from melting and land-based ice, as well as the expansion of ocean water as the temperature rises. So the scientific consensus about future climate change. This is measured and projected changes in the average temperature of the atmosphere. So this is where we are right here. We're at about 2015. So the projected change is going up here. So they're thinking that probably by the 22nd century that we will have increased the surface temperature by almost 6 degrees Celsius. So some factors that can amplify and some factors can actually dampen projected global warming. There's a lot of uncertainty about how much carbon dioxide and heat that the oceans can actually remove from the troposphere and how long the heat and carbon dioxide might remain there. Warmer temperatures can also create more clouds that could warm or cool the troposphere. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about greenhouse gases as well as the greenhouse effect. You can watch this video and many more on www.nerdlingscience.com. Well, this is the Queen Nerdling signing off for now. Stay nerdy till next time.